Hey everybody, a few weeks ago we installed security cameras we hooked that up to a MiFi router that we had knocking about. At the time I said that I wanted to upgrade and today that's what we're going to do. So I've been on line and I found something at a bit of a knockdown price from retail that I'm going to install today from mobile Wi-Fi I think it is. But I actually found it from a guy on eBay that had not installed it on his camper van. The system that I've gone for is the 5G Now from motorhome wi-fi let's have a look at what you get in the box a little bit more closely so here you have the antenna that goes on the roof so you can see that it says 5g on mine which means it's obviously capable if available of running 5g you also get in here the docking station which i'm going to put up in my cupboard you get the router itself battery and the charging cable for that you get an extension for the thread that's going to go through the roof you also get installation guide which i've read and it's pretty good dare i say it, it seems pretty straightforward this but that's what we're going to find out today because obviously i think if i were to do this again probably would have already drilled um and put the cables up on the roof so we're gonna have to try and, and find a way around that albeit i'm hoping that the stars will align so let's go up on the roof and select a suitable location now obviously your regular motorhome for the most part is cube shaped so you wouldn't have a taper on the roof like i have so my roof curves up i need to take that to, into account because obviously i don't want to drill it too close to the edge of this um because it won't be sat flat on the roof and i need to take into account where it's going to come in inside the van itself so what i've done is i've measured from a datum which is the max air fan inside the van and then figured out how far that is going to take to get inside the cupboard the instructions say to drill from the inside out so you know where it's coming from the inside of your van and popping out through the roof obviously i want to just double check that because i don't want it coming out on the side of my roof or too close to the edge because that that would make me stuff so measure 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 see where it's going to come out do your predicting first like anything really is what i'm taking from this that is the hope let's go get it and have a look all right so i think if i take it to the middle of this panel then i should be able to get a good seal on it so they do sell as well i was i didn't buy it directly from them but i've had a look at the accessories they do sell like a foam addition if you are going to be encountering any ridges on your roof but i'm thinking i'm going to avoid it but if your roof is ridged like mine you might be not be able to position it in such a way where you could avoid that you might need those things they do sell a bracket or i could make a bracket to put it on my roof rack or to, to raise it slightly higher you could use like a, a standard gland grommet thingy to go through the roof to keep it waterproof and then that way you um could run the cable wherever you wanted to i'm gonna need quite a long drill bit because i've got 50 mil of insulation in my ceiling plus the roof plus the um cab cabinet that is going through well it's true I didn't like the sound of it though. Let's go have a look. I oh, know, we've done all right. We've gone right through in the middle of the panel. Almost like I planned it. The next thing you need to do is drill a 25 millimeter hole with a hole saw from the outside in. Set the drill to a low speed and drill that through. Sweep up any swarfers up here. You can see the roof is pretty, pretty untidy at the moment. Pretty unclean. Now, the next stage, if you've got the correct length threaded bar, is to attach the threaded bar to your antenna, put it through the roof and do up the nut. But can you guess what I have done? My thread is not long enough. So I actually need to upgrade this to the 140 millimeter length so i'm just ringing around now to see if there's any local supplier that might have it 
so I can run it through the hole that I've already drilled. The alternative that I have and that you would have um, is to obviously mount it higher than the roof and then run it through a gland. Now that's going to be my plan B, but it shouldn't have been. I'm just full disclosure. I've messed up here um, by not ordering the extra part. That said, the extra part is like £25 plus postage. Um, and if I can't find it today, I'm going to try and come up with my own permanent version where uh, I'm just going to use my roof rack, essentially, and then put it through on a, a glam that I've already bought, thankfully. My only option really is to mount it on the roof rack, which for my my scenario is not the end of the world. Okay, so what I've done, and it does look a bit gnarly at the moment, I'm gonna clean it up and paint it. So I made a corner bracket to go between my roof rack to sit the antenna on. Um, and I've drilled through the roof rack and I'm gonna rivet and bond that on after I've just given it a quick spray paint. This is gonna be a little bit higher than my roof rack, but no higher than the lights that I've got on here. So in terms of like height clearance and things like that should be fine so this should get us out of jail i'm just going to paint it up and then we'll mount this on here but this could have been avoided if i just got the correct length um thread so just do that and make it like yourself easier on yourself okay so we'll just put a load of degreaser on that before i paint it and whilst that is drying I'm going to fit this. So what I've done is I've rubbed it down and then I've cleaned it with some panel wipe. Now I'm going to attach it to the reef with some Puraflex 40, which is very similar to Sikaflex. Um, so I'm going to put a big generous bead all the way around this and then around the edge of it itself as well, just to make sure it doesn't leak. And I'm going to point it backwards so that any airflow can go over, up and over, and any water should go that way too and actually it drains that way as well on the roof see it's all squidged out the sides that's good that's what you want might not look as tidy as some installs but I know that it won't leak and that's quite frankly all I care about because unlike other van people I don't spend a lot of time on my roof but when I'm installing stupid stuff like this okay let's spray up that bracket get it mounted up here good 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 we're getting there people just giving it a coat of acid etch and then some matte black you can't even see this on the roof I don't know why I'm doing it um but thankfully this bracket hasn't cost me anything because this aluminium came with the bus originally and was used by the coach company to hold the insulation in on the side walls. So reused and recycled. So after a little bit more to and fro than what I thought, I've installed it now. You'll notice this, the, it's facing towards the front of the vehicle. That's for aerodynamics. Um, I have riveted that on there, I bonded that on there put it through a gland in the roof and I've sealed that gland up more than um, a normal person would because I don't want it to leak. Now we can go in and install the router itself. The docking stations installed, I popped up here because I figured that will be accessible. I'm gonna put some cable clips in there in a minute. You need to hook it up to a 12 volt supply. So this only pulls 0.4 amps to run. And I already have a cable running along here, which I've got fused for the fan that I've got at the front here. And that only pulls 0.4 amps as well. And the cable is more than man enough for both of those because I ran a 2.5 mil cable along there much earlier in the build. So I can splice into that, make sure it's fused um, no higher than what those two can pull, so one amp, and we'll be hunky-dory. So I'm just gonna splice that into there now and tidy this up, and then we should be ready to fire it up. A couple more clips in there and it'll be golden. So I'm just gonna set this up now. I'm gonna try and see what signal we get without the aerial on the roof. 
and what we get with it. So we're just going to set it up. I've gone for um, an e prepaid sim. Reason being is that seems to be good in our area and also quite good coverage in Europe. Um, it's 50 quid for 120 gigabytes. So I'm going to pop that in and see what signal we've got here as it stands. So you can quickly set it all up. I've put my sim in. Must use my set word. Continue. Okay. All right. So you can see that we've got two bars 4G plus here at the moment. So I'm going to hook up to this and see what that means in terms of speed. I'm going to do a test as a bare router. So this would be, I guess, the equivalent of us having here at the moment. Um, one of those net gear nighthawks because this is it uses the same processor the same tech so we're going to run it on here see what we get got two bars on here at the moment where i am in front of my house unconnected that's not bad is it over 50 meg that's better than the broadband that we get here that isn't fiber uh we are on virgin now so it is better but before we used to get five meg so that's that's impressive actually and it's way faster than the 4g that i get here through my phone um so just flashing that up on screen now you can see that the difference is is quite marked actually what i'm going to do now is plug it in and turn on the antenna to see if it boosts the signal so again two bars without the antenna on the roof well let's just run it with it Eighty meg down. That's not bad, is it? And then we've got pretty good upload speed as well. Um, I'm going to go and try a few other things. I'm going to hook up the cameras to it. I'm going to hook up the Victron to it. See how that works with that. And then we're going to try and find a couple of places where we've got really strong signal in our town. That's exactly what we did. So we made our way out in the bus around the town. Stopped in an industrial estate, not the most picturesque of places. Got a really good speed, the fastest so far, um, upload wise. So upload's important to us because we do a lot of video, we upload a lot of content, um, and we like to video call people. So upload speed is good. And if you're working using Teams and stuff like that, also really helpful. Then made our way into a couple more spots around town and the speeds got quicker and quicker. Didn't really correlate all of the time with the number of bars on there because I think 4G is all about how many people are competing for it. And obviously the aerial on the roof and the router itself make that easier to maintain those connections. We finally did a test as we were driving. So Kelly did a test as we were driving on her phone. Um, and that was the best download speed of all, but upload was much worse. But download, great. So video streaming, anything like that, we've got better than most fiber broadband connections. And it's on the roof. So all in all, I think a worthy upgrade. We didn't find 5G anywhere. When we do, we can let you know how fast that is for us. If that's of interest, let us know. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Do take care. See you soon.